as appropriate. Right, and I talked with Tom Ross last week about the Infect deck, and uh, you know he said that the card that really makes the deck tick is Invigorate. So that is the card to look out for there. Of course, Matt is playing Esper Stoneblade, and Tom leads with a Tropical Island. Matt sacks a fetch land here. And cheap disruption, very critical against the Infect deck. It's a very explosive deck, mm -hmm. capable of killing as early as the second turn in some cases. So every source of plowshare, every discard spell, really critical for Matt in this matchup. It's a lot of glare there. It looks like a polluted, no, sorry, underground, see? And as you said, going for the disruption. So we see an Inquisition here, revealing Berserk, Invigorate, Misty Rainforest, Eighth Moth Nexus, Finds a basswood and a wasteland. If you were in Matt's shoes and you weren't sure what Tom was playing at this point. See, <laughs> the Berserk Invigorate gives away the secrets. The Tropical Island is a deceptive opening, but now remove all doubt about what you're playing against right. here. Yeah, the surprise factor is gone. <laughs> and of course, last week, Tom got a lot of that surprise factor, you know, with people that did not have hand disruption. Because yeah. there's a lot of places where Tom's deck looks like kind of a conventional, you know, green-blue aggro tempo deck right. with some of the spell choices and dazes and what have you. Matt Day takes the Invigorate, it looks like. The most efficient of the pump spells available. Right. Using the gain life ability, which is not relevant when you're killing them with poison. Yes. So. Tom Sachs, Misty Rainforest here. Grab another Tropical Island. And Tom appears to have drawn Blighted Agent this turn, which gives him a pretty efficient threat to deploy. Right. Another thing Tom mentioned is he liked to play the Boggles deck, and the problem with the Boggles deck is how few threats you have. So, you know, finding one of his threats here is pretty, pretty important. We've seen this with Naya Hexproof and Standard yesterday. Just that the weakness of all these pump spell decks is they're really predicated on finding a threat. A lot of your opening hands don't produce one, and you're susceptible to some removal spells as right. well. Leads to a lot of mulligan decisions. Matt plays a plays land and passes. We'll see if Tom, how much Tom wants to go for it here. Right. It's interesting to see if they pull the trigger and you know if they can read their opponent for disruption. Tom with a wasteland here, so. Wouldn't surprise me to see him wasteland the underground, seem yep. to see if Matt has any, any action or any sort of response, and that's exactly what Tom does. Looks like Matt does not. Tom going to get in there. Is that another Invigorate? Yep. Ooh. So that brings it to a 5-5. Five five. And now Tom casts Berserk. And if, he, if t Matt doesn't have an answer here, Five times two is 10, and that is a poison kill. So Tom <laughs> Ross very quickly up a game here. Matt with Counterspell in hand, but the Wasteland kept him off of being able to cast it, and we are quickly on to game two. Wow. Tom Ross with a turn three poison kill. So moving on to the sideboard here, I have Tom's in, in front of me. He's got a, a mishmash of, of some singletons here. We have a Swan Song, a Dispel, a Relic of Progenitus, a Misdirection, a Bajuka Bog, a Dismember, a Submerge. Uh, Verdian Corruptor, two Necropedes, a second Berserk, a Sylvan Library, and three Nature's Claims. Nature's Claim, another very efficient removal spell when you don't really care about your opponent gaining life, of, of course. I don't exactly know where Tom's going to want to go here, in part because he doesn't necessarily know right. what he's up against. All he's seen so far is Inquisition of Kozilek, a, an Underground Sea, and a basic island. So right. that could be an Esper deck potentially, or some variation of you know, Blue-Black Control or a Bug Control list. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do think he's going to want additional threats as he's likely to be slogging through more removal in the post-board games. And in that case, I'd like the Sylvan Library as well, giving him a little more staying power. Right, and, you know, he might be able to take him off Bug with the basic island there. His Bug tends to run no basic lands. But, you know, again, like you said, it's very tough to figure out what he has. As for Matt, his sideboard contains a couple copies of Cabal Therapy, some Meddling Mages, Spell Pierce, a Pithing Needle, Humility, Surgical Extraction, Force of Will, a Notion Thief, got to get him with that. <laughs> Zers, Wielding, Flusterstorm, Supreme Verdict, and a Sword of Fire and Ice. So Humility is actually an interesting kind of one-card win against Tom. Yes. He has to try to go 
you know, manual style dealing 20 with his now 1-1 creatures without infect. Uh, I think the additional removal, uh, I think even something like Cabal Therapy is very good because Tom's deck, even though it's an attacking creature deck, if anything, more closely resembles a combo deck right. than anything in my mind. And that's how he described it last week. That you're just trying to piece it together, piece it together. You know, he's even got a couple copies of Gataxin Probe to know when the, you know, the path is clear to push in all that damage. Yeah, we've seen some decks in Legacy that are, you know, purportedly beatdown decks. They play with the creatures they intend on attacking with that actually have a pretty significant combo element to them. Uh, Burn has that characteristic. I would say Affinity has that characteristic. And so not uncommon to see uh, the most aggressive decks in Legacy take on that kind of angle because you just don't have that much time in this format. Yeah. And opposite of Boggles, though, you know, his creatures are very targetable. So, you know, with the removal being cheap, it's very important for Tom to know when the path is clear. Otherwise, he's just going to run. Yeah, information is very key here. Right. As we saw, you know, Tom, there's some risk there. He, he went for it in a pretty good spot, but, you know, he doesn't really know the full extent of, of Matt's hand necessarily. Right. There are responses that Matt could have that could be disruptive there. Uh, and so that information is very valuable. There is that give and take of, you know, not wanting to wait too long because then obviously you allow them to find the disruption. But again, you don't want to run head first into it. Yeah, it's, so. it's very rare in Legacy that the waiting game is a positive thing to be doing in part because of Brainstorm and Ponder. Mm -hmm. it, your opponent doesn't just have their draw steps. They're often looking at multiple cards to turn through their cantrips. And often the best play uh, with these sort of decks is to throw caution to the wind and just go for it when you feel like you have a good spot. Yeah, and there are many decks, you know, just from looking around the room today and many of the known archetypes that are like that. I mean, sometimes you can wait to play around the, the counter magic or the disruption, but a lot of times it's just jamming it. You're yeah. either throwing down a blood moon, pumping a guy up to 10 poison, you know, sneak and show, all those types of decks. The disruption is really just too cheap, and the cantrips and are so efficient and powerful that time is not on your side. So yeah. you see a lot of... You know, I'm going to put this person to the force of will test mm -hmm. right here, or I'm going to make them have a spell pierce right at this spot because uh, I don't think my odds get better if I continue to wait this thing out. They definitely do not. And that's one thing I've really enjoyed about this job, just looking and looking around the room, watching certain players that play these archetypes, you know, which players have the read, you know, which players will pull the trigger, you know, and force their opponent to have it. And that, that kind of tension is something I enjoy. In the legacy, especially, Standard has a small amount of that element as well. But the legacy, the the decks are so much more polarized, mm -hmm. and the the play patterns are so much more extreme that it really uh, accentuates that feature even more. Right. Tom, of course, writing about in fact on the select side. You know, you can read his articles about that. He's championed that, and he's also played it in uh, modern. So a little less powerful in modern. Sure. Although I actually had a run in at, at Grand Prix Portland with an Infect deck that, that actually killed me very easily. Actually, one game, embarrassingly enough, killed me with damage and then was able to do something very similar to what Tom just did. Not, of course, fueled by Invigorate and Berserk, but you know, by modern standards, very efficient. You right. know, The Vines of Basswood still appears there. Mightable Croza. There's a, a, a good litany of, of cheap, efficient pump spells. So, in fact, not really on anyone's radar in modern right now, but right. Grand Prix Richmond coming up, and you never know. It's tough to rationalize playing that deck when Malira is a main right. deck feature of arguably the best deck in the <laughs> format, but uh, in fact definitely has his proponents. Yeah, and trying to win through just damage alone, not a great path to victory for the Infect deck. No. You know, we got to see, um, it was an off-camera match, Tom played uh, Ruben playing Painter, and you know he was trying to force in damage with Noble Hierarchs, you know, and that just wasn't going to get it done. So, Matt will be on the play here quickly, Mulligan. Throwing it away. And Tom appears to be mulling over his seven. If you're Matt, what is the ideal type of hand you're looking for here, you know, on the play of six cards? I think something along the lines of discard spell, removal spell, snapcaster mage, two or three lands, and something else. Something along those lines. It needs to be cheap and it needs to be fast. You don't have a lot of time. Is the, is the another problem, you know, in Matt's situation, can he close fast enough after the disruption? Because, you know, his deck has a couple of Vendillion clicks, you know, the Lingering Souls. Once he disrupts Tom, can he pressure him quick enough without Tom assembling the combo again? Yeah, that's a huge part of the equation here. And, you know, 
Tom can even actually win kind of at instant speed at, through crop rotation for a, a Nexus on tap and kill you. So right. it's, it's never as safe as it appears. And Matt leads off here with a Thoughtseize off an underground sea. It's almost like we're in standard again. <laughs> I saw my fair share of Thoughtseize yesterday. Fair number of Glistener Elves here. A Sylvan Library of Vines of Vastwood. Only one land here, but two infect creatures for Tom to get the ball rolling. And Tom had a sort of hand like this against Tan and Grace last round, where he pretty much had all gas but needed a land, and so he can keep very light, uh, light land hands with this deck. Now, a feature of Matt's Esper Stoneblade deck that isn't that popular or conventional at this point are three copies of Lingering Souls. If he's able to stem the early tide, Lingering Souls is a very powerful tool against a variety of Tom's infect creatures. It's basically just. Uh, you know, Blood Angel can continue to attack with the assistance of Noble Hierarch. Maybe you can cobble something together, but Glistener Elf and Ink Moth Nexus no longer factors if Matt's able to get to that stage of the game. Shaheen Sarani would be a big fan. <laughs> Matt really mulling this over. Takes Blighted Angel, and mm -hmm. I think that's in part because he has Lingering Souls in hand. That's his game plan here. Tom draws for the turn. Hiding, in, hiding his decades. hand. The old Reed Duke style of play here. And it appears Tom has not drawn a land, but he has drawn Noble Hierarch. And that's what he opts for. Matt cracks the Flooded Strand. Another potential very powerful opening that, that Matt can try to assemble here is Stoneforge Mystic into Umazawa's Chute. And that is what it looks like he's going for. Let's see if he fetches up here. And you called it. Umazawa's Chute in perhaps its best matchup in Legacy is Elves with the plethora of one toughest mm -hmm. creatures that that deck produces. Tom's deck possibly even more exposed. Yes. Every creature with one toughness. See what Tom has to do here. Slyly pulls his hand yes. back. Not helping us out here. <laughs> <laughs> now, it is very reasonable that Tom has cited in some of his nature's claims. Right. He doesn't, doesn't know necessarily what he was playing against based on the opening last game, mm -hmm. but it, it was a Esper Stone Blade ish opening. Yes. And he already has one main deck, you know, which he stressed the importance of last week when I talked with him. And you know, he has the option of bringing quite a few more. He can put side into a full playset yeah. in post-board games. Again, life not mattering uh, you know, when you kill him with poison. So he's found a Sylvan Library. And another Noble Hierarch. And this allows Tonda to potentially go to a different plan of just attacking with Inkmon Nessus fueled by Exalted Triggers. Mm -hmm. We'll see if uh, Matt tries to get the GTA in play, or... He's going to go with Lingering Souls, right. and I really like this play a lot for Matt, as it really stunts the angle Tom was trying to take, which is going into the air. Right. And now Tom very needs, needs to very quickly find answers to this looming Umazawa's GTA. Yeah. So those Lingering Souls will clog up any flying shenanigans. Tom, of course, has the die on the top of his library to remind him about the library. Tom is being very secretive with his cards. Tom, I believe, looking at a tropical island, a noble hierarch, and a glistener elf. Three cards that provide very little assistance against this looming jute. You know, with that knowledge, Tom's got to be looking for a nature's claim here. Still mulling it over here. Again, hard to overstate how good Umazawa's Jute is against Tom's deck. Mm -hmm. As Tom takes all three cards. That is an aggressive move. Well, Tom's, Tom's like told, not much of a resource in this matchup. You know, if he loses, it's likely to be overwhelmed by card advantage or removal, not because he got nickel and dime yes. damage-wise out of the game. So that's a, that's a I like picking point. up all three. Yeah, and that is something he did a lot last week, too. You know, not fearing the life loss. Get full three cards ahead. 
going with the Glistener Elf. And a third Noble Hierarch. So Matt, very quick to just chump block there, saving himself four Infect tokens. Yeah. The triple Exalted here, nothing to scoff at. Of course, Tom's going to have to get through three more one ones, you know, if Matt chooses to flash back the Lingering Souls. And Matt critically has found a fourth land, which enables Umazada's Jite this turn if he wants to. Yeah. As he pulls the Jite to the top of his, his grip there. Now, Matt has Jite with Force of Will back up here, which is a pretty comfortable spot, you know. But if you're in, in Matt's position, it's hard to feel too, too comfortable here because you know this Infect deck can potentially kill you out of nowhere. Yeah, it looks like he's suiting it up. So he is using Vines of the Vastwood here in response to give Matt's creature untargetability. Ooh, tricky. So let's see if Matt's willing to force a yeah. will and just go for it here. Vines of the Vastwood, Vastwood one word. And he is going to pull the trigger on the force of will. Taking a damage here. Make sure his g gets equipped. Swings in there. Tom looks like he's going to hit, take this hit and try to slog through this Jitte. All right, two counters on the Jitte. But again, if you're in Matt's seat, you can't feel even too safe in this spot right now. Having the flying blocker back on defense is very helpful, mm -hmm. of course. But you know that Tom has a, a litany of pump spells and you've, you know, various effects. It's hard to know for sure that even your two counters are enough protection to prevent right. Tom from killing you this turn. Tom mulling over his three cards from the library here. Has a Berserk in hand, and if if Matt gets sloppy about these just say counters, yeah. this could just be a lethal attack. Because critically, Berserk gives Trample. So it actually gives Tom a way to play over the top of these, yeah. these removal spells. When combined with his Exalted Triggers, he might be able to actually generate lethal. You see Tom here. Brainstorming. Always good to be able to fit a brainstorm into your aggro deck. Yep. Tom's deck kind of straddling the line between aggro and combo, mm -hmm. so. Going pretty deep on the deck here. Well, time is not on Tom's side right now, so, you know, it's incumbent on him to try to end the game really as quickly as he can. Going down to two life. So we'll see if he's able to cobble together lethal. Tom really going through the permutations of the math right now. Is this boom or bust for Tom right here? Is there any? It, it may not be. Uh, Tom has put himself in that position right now by taking those cards with the uh, Sylvan Library is now he's basically facing down lethal. He does have some chump blockers, but his board position is deteriorating so fast that I think that he is going to do everything in his power to end the game this turn. Right. You know, after Matt pitched his force of will, you know, the coast relatively clear other than the flying blocker. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's empty handed, so Tom can do it, he can do it. So it goes Gataxian Probe to draw a card, paying the mana to not die. Another Brainstorm here. Misty Rainforest. Oh, and he just found Invigorate. Invigorate. And you see Tom sit up here. <laughs> Any poker player knows when someone pulls up in their chair like that. And I think Tom might just have it now. It Plays his Misty, cracks it. Go if Matt lets these Exalted Triggers resolve, I mean, it, he's definitely not going to be a play over the top of Invigorate plus, uh, plus Berserk. No, that is a lot of power. After getting that deep in his deck, you know, he ha he, Tom has to have all the options here. All right, so here it goes. Three triggers. In response to a trigger, in response to it was on Jete with the triggers on the sack, we see Invigorate. Invigorate. Another one. 
That's a kicked up vines, and that's a berserk. And we are looking at holy, holy moly! Out of nowhere, <laughs> Tom Ross going down to one life, digging through his deck as, as hard as he could to assemble the combo in the face of Umazawa's Jute. Comes across for I'd have to do the math here. 18. It was 18. No, sorry. It was four plus four plus four times two is. It was 20 some odd <laughs> points of infect damage, and Tom Ross in blistering fast. Wow. Pace are able to take the match against Matt Mansour, and Tom moves to six and one. Through the disruption, through the flying blockers, still gets there with just a 